Well, there's a live look at the White House where President Trump is set to unveil his pick for the Supreme Court tomorrow at 5 p.m. To uphold the laws of our land and to uphold our Constitution as written on Saturday, I will be announcing my nominee to the United States Supreme Court. But the Democrats say, you shouldn't do it. Let me ask you the one simple question. If it was them instead of us, do you think they'd do it? I think so. Here to discuss, we got uh, on the North Lawn of the White House, White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. Mark, good morning to you. Good morning, Steve. Great to be with you guys. So the president, good to have you. Uh, the president's going to make his announcement at 5 o'clock tomorrow. I'm sure you have a pretty good idea who's, who it's going to be. <laughs> How many of the names we've seen has he actually interviewed? We've heard he's talked to Amy Coney Barrett, has not talked to Judge Lagoa. And just about how many has he talked to? You know, Steve, that's a great question that a good journalist should ask. And as a good chief of staff, I'm not going to answer that <laughs> question. Uh, I can tell you that we've been fully vetting a number of candidates, uh, trying to make sure that we have the best pick going forward. Uh, the president tomorrow, as you have mentioned, will make the announcement at 5 o'clock. And then what happens on Capitol Hill is a partisan battle that uh, honestly will be uh, probably the most disgusting thing that we've seen since Judge Kavanaugh. They're already gearing up, no matter who the pick is, right. to say that this person, this female uh, judge, is not qualified. It's all about politics. It has nothing to do with a resume. Well, you know, Mark, the Democrats are really hacked off at you guys because they say, look, uh, Merrick Garland, uh, we put him up, the, the president did, uh, Barack Obama back in the day. But the truth of the matter is, and I've heard a number of Republicans say this, had they had the White House and the Senate, Merrick Garland currently would be sitting on the Supreme Court, but they didn't. And if they were in your shoes, they would have done exactly the same thing. Listen, you, you know that they would have done the, the exact same thing uh, because what this is all about, elections have consequences. And the fact is, is that we have a Republican president who's making a, a, a nomination. We have a Republican Senate that hopefully will confirm. Uh, but uh, we don't have to look any further than Chuck Schumer this morning. You know, he's all about election uh, security. But what did he do? He's done a procedural move to take down an election security hearing because he's protesting the fact that there's a nomination going on where the president is just doing his constitutional duty. Uh, listen, the American people are tired of it. Uh, and what we'll see on November 3rd is they will reelect President Donald J. Trump because he's the only one in uh, Washington, D.C., willing to be transparent and willing to move forward in the face of great uh, uh, adversaries and, and odds against him. The way you described the Senate confirmation hearing with whomever the person is, That's right. uh, essentially a spectacle, you're saying. It sounds like uh, the White House, uh, you and the president's team, are counting on the Democrats overplaying their hands, horrifying the American public. Well, we've already seen some uh, vicious attacks on a number of nominees that have been mentioned uh, as possible candidates. They're coming after their faith, their Catholic faith. And uh, if they're going to go after a judge based on what they believe, not on how they voted and not based on their record, shame on them. I thought we were better than that uh, as a nation. And when we look at, the, uh, at our Constitution, it, it allows us to really uh, work worship and, and have a faith uh, as we dictate, and that shouldn't be a litmus test for the court, and yet they're trying to make it exactly mm -hmm. that. Uh, Mark, going back to your days when you were in the U.S. Congress, I know you've been very curious about Hunter Biden's dealings uh, with various international entities. There's been some news about him over the last couple of days, and yet uh, it's hard to pick up a newspaper and find that news in any of the papers or when you're clicking around, you don't really see it on any of the channels. We've got it. We try to do all the news. Well, I'm glad that you're doing the news. It's hard to ignore a, a, an over $3 million payment from a, a mayor of a Russian city to Hunter Biden while uh, 
uh, Hunter's dad was was actually in the administration. It's hard to ignore uh, over 80 pages of a report from Senator Ron Johnson and his team, uh, and yet the mainstream media seems to do that. Here's what I, I wonder. Yesterday, Joe Biden said he wasn't going to talk to any reporters after 930 in the morning. Perhaps he doesn't want to answer the questions. Why don't we start asking the tough questions to Joe Biden instead of how he feels about his race, maybe how he feels about the accusations that have been leveled about him and his son and the corruption that perhaps existed. We are 39 days away from the presidential election. Mr. Meadows, how is the Joe Biden campaign getting away with keeping him away from the press, uh, asking questions? You know, uh, Chris Wallace is obviously going to be asking 90 minutes worth on Tuesday night. But nonetheless, you know, there are reporters outside of Joe Biden's house every day waiting to ask him a question, and he never comes out. And the campaign, this is obviously part of their strategy. Well, it's part of their strategy, but the interesting thing is, is after 47 years, if you don't have much to say, you better stay in the basement. <laughs> and, and so it's a good strategy from uh, Joe Biden's camp, because uh, if you look at the record, there's not much there. And uh, as we start to see exactly what Joe Biden is all about, uh, he's about hiding from the American people, not being transparent. You know, good or bad, uh, this president has made himself available to more people, more reporters, more hostile reporters than any president in modern history, and, and guess what he gets for it? You know, he gets the adoration of a number of people. You saw that that crowd last night in Jacksonville. We've yep. been all over. Uh, Democrats, unaffiliated and Republican voters appreciate the fact that he's willing to tell it like it is. And uh, and I guess it's time for Joe to yeah. tell it like it is. Well, I saw a review by The New York Post, I believe, that showed that uh, President Trump had taken five times more questions from reporters. and. As you said, many hostile reporters as well than Joe Biden has uh, for the last couple of months. Real quick, uh, the president yesterday was talking about uh, America First health care plan. It sounds like uh, if you're on Medicare, uh, you're going to wind up with a, a little card that's going to help you pay for stuff. Steve, this is a great news for seniors who, if they're tuned in right now, uh, in October and November, you will be getting a card for $200 to help with your copay. It's the first time that money went from big farmers' pocket into American seniors' pockets, and this president made sure that it happened. And so uh, a huge discount card, almost $7 billion going from uh, big pharma back to the American people. It's just delivering on his promise once again. The president is committed to do do that for our seniors, but for all Americans as well. Well, I think America's seniors always would like a couple hundred bucks from the government, the money going to them rather than the other way around. But there are a number of the president's critics who are saying, oh, are you kidding me? He's just trying to buy the senior vote. Well, let me just tell you, it's all about seniors, but it's all about the American people. This president has actually lowered prescription drug prices when President Obama didn't do it, when George Bush didn't do it. Uh, he's all about delivering. He's going to work up to the very last day and making sure that uh, the American people get what they deserve. And it's a break from Big Pharma and all of those lobbyists that want to make sure that they take money from hardworking Americans. All right. Um, Mark. Meadows, joining us from the North Lawn of the White House. Mark, thank you very much, and have a good weekend. Thank you.